Uh, tell you what, the best part of the night, you, you walk over here to do media and you see Clint Capella and John Collins in the weight room lifting right now um, after playing 43 for John and, and 39 for Clint. And, and they're in there uh, still getting better. And I think that was kind of a summary of tonight's game. I thought we got better as the game went on. I think our guys are getting better. Um, monster game for Clint Capella. I don't know if there's any way of, of, of not highlighting a player um, after a performance like that. And it's just good to see. That was what we call a we win. Uh, we had a lot of guys contribute in a lot of different ways, but really a gutsy win for our guys tonight and the confidence builder. First question for the night. will come from Kelly Kroll. Yeah, Coach, there's a lot of great things to unpack in this one, I think. Um, and you mentioned Clint Capella. Where does a, a performance like this rank in your eyes for him and just where he can go from here even? It feels like every night we're talking about him right now. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, the goal for him uh, when we traded for him was to, to have an anchor of our defense, a guy that can secure defensive rebounds and allow us to get out and run, uh, another pick and roll player for Trey. Um, you know, his ability to finish at the basket behind the defense. Um, and he's, he's doing all of that, plus some. You know, him having five blocks, I thought he could have had 10 tonight, honestly. I think he was hugged up on his guy uh, down the floor, and I think he could have been in position to get some more. It's an area we can continue to grow him. Uh, but he's all over the place, offensive rebounding, 10 offensive rebounds at the half. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a game. I definitely haven't coached that in a game. Uh, and, and I thought he's just been tremendous. Every game, he seems to be getting better. His confidence is building. He's getting to the free throw line at a high rate. Now he's starting to knock them down as well. Uh, but you can see his, his confidence skyrocketing, and uh, it's good for us. It's, it's good for the guys. It's a big confidence builder. It'll, it'll allow us to pressure and do some things creatively on, up the floor defensively, knowing that we have a guy like that but, uh, down the floor protecting the rim. And it felt like, you know, I mean, he obviously kept you guys in this one, but then in the second half, Trey, you know, six points in the first and he finishes with 38. What was the biggest difference for him? Well, I, that's that's his role. Um, you know, he's got a he's got a dual responsibility of, of getting everyone involved, um, you know, picking apart the defense. And then he's our closer. Uh, we've talked about it. There's no secret about it. He's a guy that we have to put the ball in his hands down the stretch. He's a guy we have to put the ball in his hands when we're in the bonus. He's got an ability to get to the free throw line. He's got a unique ability to get by his defender. Uh, and he's got unbelievable vision to where he can make any pass. And, you know, great drop off to Clint to, to send it in overtime, which was key. Uh, but he, we, we, we don't come back in this game if, if Trey Young doesn't turn into Trey Young um, down the stretch. And one more guy, if you don't mind pointing him out, you mentioned Capella throwing it down there to tie things up without JC's block. I mean, he was also, I feel like, a, a star that may get overlooked in a night like this. But what can you say about the combination of he and Clint? Tonight? Yeah, it was it was a hell of a block. Um, you know, and, and what went unseen was the charge that Trey took uh, beneath the play as well. It didn't get called, but Trey did a great job of stepping in and taking that charge. And, and John did a great job of staying with the play and getting the block. Um, but we couldn't, we couldn't buy a basket. There was a stretch. I think we're down 15 in the fourth and about 832 when that timeout was called. We, we couldn't buy a basket. We were getting some clean looks, uh, some clean shots. Um, but I think the thing that turned it for us was we were, we were starting to get stops and put some stops together. And eventually the shots were going to fall. And that's, what ha that's exactly what would happen. Um, and so John's block at the end of the regulation it's kind of the summary of that fourth quarter. We, we, we got back in the game because we were getting stops and, and we went into overtime because he made a key block at the end of it. We have a question from Sarah Spencer. Lloyd, how impressed have you been with Clint just as far as the consistency that he's bringing uh, to the team? Um, I mean, he, you can just look at his performance. Uh, he's He's... You know, he's bringing what, you know, he and I talked and we were talking about role definitions before the season started. And I said, I just need Clint Capella to be Clint Capella. We didn't bring you here to reinvent you and put you behind a three point line or do anything different. Uh, play behind the defense, rim run and transition, set screens and roll, create some separation and uh, it crashed the glass. You know, I, I think I mentioned his stats. You know, he has the most uh, in the restricted area shots 
for any big in the league. I think he was second in offensive rebounds to Drummond. Um, and that's all we need Clint to be. We need him to be the same and maybe a better version of what he's always been and, and to anchor our defense. And so he's done that from day one. It took him a while to get his legs going. It took him a while for me to, to play him extended minutes. Now we're playing him 30 plus, you know, 40 uh, almost tonight just because he's getting in game shape. He's in better game shape and you're seeing more production from him. Thank you. Chris Kirchner. Um, you guys were down 14 with five minutes left. What do you think changed from that point to, you know, get it to overtime? Just stops. Um, you know, Trey did a, an unbelievable job of just managing the game. We ran three different sets in the fourth quarter and that was it. Um, and with each set, we, we pretty much had a similar look and, um, you know, two options at, around the basket and, and Kev and Solo spaced out. And he and Kevin in that two-man game, you know, Kevin kept it a couple of times, makes a great play to Clint for the N1. Trey kept it a couple of times. Um, but that's just game management. That's great execution. Trey, Trey was, he was poised. He was patient. And uh, when we were getting stops, we were able to get down and get organized. And, and, you know, obviously we made some big plays down the stretch, but that's just good execution by Trey leading that group. Terrell Thomas. Coach, of course, your, your, your players came into the game uh, shorthanded tonight. So what was your message to your team? And how did you get them to compete so hard uh, playing those those three guys so many minutes this evening? You know, it, it's it's we always say it's a we mentality. Uh, I don't I don't go into a game talking about who's not there. Uh, all I can focus on is who's available and, and how we can, you know, create some lineups. Um, where we can maximize who's on the court. I, I thought our guys were tremendous. And this is one of those games where if Clint's rolling like that, he's got to play. If John's rolling the way he's rolling, we got to play him. Um, you know, we were shorthanded, but I thought we always, I always think we have enough to win the game. We just have to execute at a high level. We got to knock down shots and we got to get stops. And it took us a while to get that going with all three phases, but uh, the fourth quarter was great for us. It went Coach, you guys go into overtime after a great defensive play. Uh, seemed to really energize the guys. What was the message to the team uh, as overtime started? Just win the game. Um, you know, we've been in situations, especially the, the group that I've coached for three years, where we've, uh, you know, mishandled some games and, and you're deflated when a team comes back on you. Uh, this was different. We were down. We were down big. And we were able to manage uh, somehow get back into it. And, you know, for us, it's, it's confidence. It's the builder, you know, Clint with the big dunk, John with the big block. And so now you feel like you've got the momentum, you're, you're, you're sky high with your confidence. And I think our guys uh, were that way uh, going into the overtime, but I just went into the huddle. I said, we got to win the game now. Let's just go out there and win the game. And, uh, you know, they get off to a good start at the beginning of overtime and we settle in and, and really just get what we want down the stretch. Got two more. First from Rafael Haynes. Hey, Coach Rafael from the three point conversion. Coach, in the middle of the fourth quarter, you all were down, I think, as much as 14 or 15. How did the team keep their composure? Like, they didn't panic at all. It seemed it was no panic, and they just played their game. Was there something that you said or any of the players said in the huddle? No, you know, we, we talked about the shots are going to fall. You know, I, I thought the assistant coaches did a good job of just saying, you know, the shots are going to keep falling. They're, they're going to start falling, you know, keep shooting it, shoot it with confidence. Um, I don't think there was any panic. Uh, you know, I, I thought Trey did a good job of just managing the game. I thought we did a good job of creating open shots. And early on, I mean, we had three kind of blind, wide open shots, uncontested, that just didn't go down. And you really can't change what you're doing. If those are the shots you're creating, you just, you know, somebody has got to get one to go. And, you know, John gets fouled on a three point attempt. Uh, I think solo finally hits one late. Kevin hits a big three, you know, kind of everyone stepped in and contributed in different ways. And that's all we needed. We just needed a little bit of momentum on the offensive end. Cause we were doing a great job defensively. Final question from Jamila Johnson. Hey, Coach, you did um, mention this briefly, but Solomon Hill did go uh, two for eight, but he hit that three late on in the game. 
uh, what did you like from his game and, you know, inserting him into that starting line and playing him that many minutes? Just, just a competitor. I mean, we're missing our two basically top perimeter defenders and Dre and Cam and, and Solomon gives us that girt, that size, that toughness, that experience. And, you know, Jeremy Grant's, he's off to a hell of a start this year. I think this is his ninth straight game or 10th straight game or something like that over 20. He's averaging about 25 per game. And so we, we needed a matchup for Jeremy just to make it tough. And, um, you know, having him on the floor provided that competitiveness, you know, you're going to have him in the right spots on the other end as well. And uh, that, that's what we needed missing all of the guys that we have uh, out right now. Thank you, Coach. That was our final question. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.